that. Anyways, so prank phone called Cheech on the podcast, and it went as good as you could have asked it to. Better. I thought you were going to know. I kind of had an idea at uh, at about three quarters of the way. It was a 14-minute phone call. So I was trying to be very nice, and I was trying to not literally melt down and destroy this guy's face because Craig was sounding very ridiculous. And then he said, hey, you can have a one-night stand with Craig mm-hmm. and a plate of nachos. <laughs> yeah, just come try it out. Hey, I'll pay for your gas out there. Mm-hmm. I'll uh, I'll get you a plate of nachos. Then when he said... Because I want you to put in some sweat equity out here, Cheech. Yeah. Okay? I want you... You're going to be a part-time investor and you're, and you're like, Craig, I just got to get paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you... When you point in tune, whoever watches this, I want you to know. I, everybody, you two, you. I'm talking to you. Rodeo time. Got to get her on down the road. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rodeo Time with Dale Brisby. For the three of you that don't know, I am the greatest bull rider ever to walk the earth, and uh, and that's a fact. I'm joined today with Mr. Donnie Ray Daytona. Ray and Josiah Chicho Nation Zapata. Josiah. Yeah, I do. You know that I don't have a middle name, but my mom, my mom was actually gonna uh, give me the middle name Ray. That's yeah. You don't have a middle name. I don't have a middle name. What? Real talk. Real talk. Is that yeah. legal? I don't know. We're actually. Why would that be illegal? I mean, I mean everybody it, else has a middle name. Have you not seen John Wayne and the Cowboys? Yeah. Where that Cimarron. was a, a little Cimarron. bit. There's Cimarron. no more name. That's half a name. There is no more name. I am a mistake of nature. Oh, are you a mistake of nature? No, but I will say this though, uh, that there isn't really a whole lot of hand soap left in the bathroom, and so I'm gonna need Rodeo Time Incorporated to get on that. What does that have to do with a mistake? Did you make a mistake of nature in there? <laughs> That's kind of what I was getting at, but. <laughs> That's <laughs> making sure I wash my hands. Yeah. Before, you know, yeah. nature called and and you didn't answer. No, I I mean I put water in there and then I pumped it out and so I made some more soap. You watered down the soap. Yeah. Are you that bad at going to the bathroom? No, there's just I just know that everybody else here uses the soap and then they don't they don't. So when nature it. calls Cheech, you make mistakes. You don't want me to say what I really want to say. Okay. Um, well. You know, there was a time when the the warehouse was, I mean, that would have been a big deal. Right now we've got a men's and a women's restroom. So Donnie and I can just use the women's if we have to, which, I mean, I've done before. I like to occasionally when everybody's it's left a, the warehouse. It's nice in there. Yeah. It smells better. It's cleaner. A it's, year ago. They're scented candles. They, are, they actually also have much nicer toilet paper. Yeah. Our toilet paper sucks. They got, the girls have good toilet paper? Yeah. You haven't gone in there and kiped the good toilet paper? Yeah, so I'm saying every now and then in the evening. But I like to keep the good toilet paper in there. Just that way it makes that experience for me a little bit. You know, it's like a <laughs> like vacation. It's like, yeah, it's kind of enjoyable. and Yeah, I guess. But, but, yeah, it's Sporgy. like I'm on vacation. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm like in Parks and Rec. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, well, the other thing that I do want to say about the Rodeo Time bathroom is, though, is I know that not to go in there in the middle of the day in the summertime. No, it's it's cool. It's it's nice now. There's AC in there. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. We have what? Hey, yeah, dude, dude. Times they are changing. I know I grew up across the tracks, but old son, the warehouse is moving, moving up. up. Yeah. So obviously, it's. I mean, I'm not gonna cool this whole freaking warehouse. Why? Why? Because <laughs> he's, he's sweating just thinking about it. <laughs> because it's just too big and it would cost too much. Can you get situated? Can you get that situated, please? I, I've never operated one of these before in my life. Mm-hmm. I can there, tell. There, there it is. How about that? Yeah. I'm just going to leave it there. I like to raise mine up so I can have better posture. Yeah, I know. Anyway, but so the back, it's like a, I don't know, a quarter of the building, you know, back there mm-hmm. where we used to do the podcast. And uh, we've got that cooled. We've got two offices. And, and so the guy, I, I didn't even tell him to do it. 
I think one of y'all or Lisa told him like, let's go ahead and run two vents into each of the bathrooms. That's nice. Yeah, it's so the, slick. Yeah, so, so now, so now when I come to film videos and stuff, like <laughs> you don't have to leave the bathroom door open. I, yeah, like yeah, also gonna, shut the bathroom door because you'll let all the. AC I think out. it's time that we talk and we discuss about maybe cooling uh, seven thousand. Well, now it's probably about five thousand square foot or more. I mean, it's big. Um, it's cool in the warehouse. I think you guys, I think people Not in the warehouse yet. need to go on strike. Yeah. And really petition. Mm-hmm. This is... Drive around. We're in Texas. Like, you don't just, like, form a union and go on strike in Texas at a t-shirt company mm-hmm. during a recession. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not technically a recession. It's just... No, on. it is technically a recession. <laughs> Warren Buffett said it's not a recession. He just said that it's... Uh, just Warren Buffett time. doesn't make his money on a t-shirt company either. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> I see how, I see why now. What did Warren Buffett say? He just said that you need to be greedy when people are fearful and be fearful when people are greedy. Yeah. That is really good advice. That's what he said. It's the only thing I really heard in his, he let out in his uh, Brookshire Hathaway. Like, that's the only thing I picked up in his meeting to his So right first. now, he's being greedy. Yeah. Dude, you could have invested in anything, anything, in late March and April, and you would have made money by now. Yeah. I, you know what, though? Real talk, I just, I wasn't ready at that time. Like, I was looking at Zoetis, the, the animal medicine, health yeah. company. Like, you could have doubled your money in six weeks if you'd have just in, invested in animal health. Uh, even the the uh, the freaking airline companies, oh, yeah. like any of those, um, all the tech Cruise ships, uh, Amazon dropped down to like sixteen hundred dollars, sixteen fifty or something. Really? Now they're now they're back up to twenty five hundred dollars. Like, that's not doubling your money, but like still, you could have made some, some made change. some coin right there. But it's not like you're gonna make that money and then go get it like right now. This is a, this is for long yeah, term. Yeah, long term. These are long term. You could though. This you could have traded and just done it right now. I'm I'm a long term guy. Are you? Are you? I am. I figured that's that's the announcer in me though. Like I, that is that is that is the rodeo. What in, in the me. fart does that does announcing want, have to do with long term? Because like this, check it out. If I come to your rodeo, I don't want to be there for one or two or three years unless your rodeo is just that terrible. Yeah, I like your Craig. Craig, uh, this is Craig. Yeah, I want to be there. Yeah, <laughs> I like C-R-A-P. Craig. CRAP. I find that Craig. It's <laughs> just <laughs> a CRAP rodeo out. What a, and then merge with the PRCA. Like where did he come? Like I like how he transitioned this whole conversation from. The economy to it is uh, a, it is, I do, I do to see a it plug, a personal plug. Yeah. No, well, you know, I, it really is though. Really, if you go to a rodeo that's terrible, if you go to a rodeo that's terrible, you don't want to like. I'm like I'm here for a paycheck, but I want to come here and be a part of your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be here for a long time. You want it? You want a career? Yeah, just like yeah. investing. You want to? We so, want this thing to build so then why didn't you? Why didn't you sign on with Craig? Yeah. He's trying. He was trying. He gave it a lot more. Golly, than I think I, a lot. I don't think we've talked to him since then. No. Okay, so for now those I don't of get you, text messages and I don't get for those I of you show up. that know or don't know, um, Craig, Craig John, was it don't Craig Johnson? Johnson, Craig, don't make Craig. That if, if, if hey, Craig. this is a fire. Hey, this is me. this is Craig, and I'm gonna start a I'm starting a rodeo association. Um, Cowboys Rodeo Association of the Plains, and so that's that's the C R A P, um, um, and, and uh, that's no crap, okay? And uh, we wanted stop, Josiah, stop, stop, stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, yeah, stop easy right on now. the courts. We easy. wanted Josiah to be our announcer. I think that everybody understands that. Anyways, so prank phone call. Cheech on the podcast, and it went as good as you could have asked it to. Better. I thought you were gonna know. I kind of had an idea at uh, at about three quarters of the way. It was a fourteen guy. minute phone call. So I was trying to be very nice, and I was trying to not literally melt down and destroy <laughs> this guy's face because Craig was sounding very ridiculous. And then he said, hey, you can have a one-night stand with Craig mm-hmm. and a plate of nachos. 
<laughs> yeah, just come try it out. Hey, I'll pay for your gas out there. Mm-hmm. I'll uh, I'll get you a plate of nachos. Then when he said, because I want you to put in some sweat equity out here, Cheech. Yeah. Okay, I want you. You're going to be a part time investor, and you and you're like, Craig. I just got to get paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you when you. Point in tune. Whoever watches this, I want you to know. I, everybody, you two, you. I'm talking to you, and listeners, and listeners. I love it. This is this is. I'm gonna go on a rant for a minute, okay? God, you were so freaking worked up. I was Talk because to me. I believe when I when people tell me like when you have a pre arrangement with somebody like when you call them and they say, "Hey, Dale, I want you to come catch this cow. I'm gonna mail you a check." Like. Well, you didn't mail yourself here. Like, when you when you do work, you want to get paid, right? Well, like, Craig was coming up with a ridiculous number. Like, a ridi- like. What did I say? Like $250. $250. $250. <laughs> $250. Yeah, no. Anybody that's ever hired an announcer does not go to so, work. So, for the, for the plug. Unless you're, in, hold on. Unless you're starting an announcing career, like, you're gonna have to get punched in the face, literally. Yeah, like and you that. might have to take a gig for two fifty. That's right. That's what I was doing with you. But I, I wasn't. I was. I had already. I already had. Anyway, go ahead, Craig. Craig was being. He sounded like a drunk. He sounded like a. He smoked a lot. He smoked a lot. <laughs> like I don't know if it were Marlboro Reds or Ann Coors Lights or Palmar. 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 No filters. Yeah. No, I. I. I Virginia Slims. Yeah. Yeah. That Slams. he stole from his nana's house. Mm. Um. Anyway. Craig was really. Can I say this? I'm just gonna say it. The yeah. spirit, the spirit was telling me with inside. It was like, just be kind to this man. Just be nice as long as you can. As long as you can, just listen to him and listen to what he has to say. But do not <laughs> yell at him. Do not do nothing mean to this man. Did you? How much did it push you over the edge when I said? Why don't you get a job? <laughs> uh, so Cheech, um, Cheech is a professional rodeo announcer. He's also a sales rep for Rodeo Time. So he's essentially what Packer is on the office. He's our traveling salesman, <laughs> and he also you he's know, an outdoor cat. He helps he helps some different people do different things. But just like all rodeo cowboys. You want to have a specific job or not one at all so that you can go rodeo, especially once you get to a level where you're making decent money. So, like, for instance, um, um, <clears throat> Canadian saddle bronc rider just came to mind. What's his name? Um, I know his daughter's name is Lucy Louise. Anyways, it's going to pop into my head here in a minute. Uh, or Jacobs or Sterling or one of them guys, like, they may get an odds and ends job here and there, but they're not going to go get a nine to five because Clay Elliott, he's a bronc rider. Um, he's not going to go get a nine to five because um, he's going to be gone three months out Got of the summer. Bronx. Yeah, he's going to, yeah. there may even be a, an April or a March where he's gone for four days out of the week. So if he can have a gig here and there where he's doctoring yearlings, something to give him something to do on a Monday and a Tuesday. But you don't get a full time gig when you're trying to rodeo, and and even guys that are like let's say just top fifty in the world, they're gonna have, um, they're even gonna have uh, little odds and ends jobs because they want to go and and uh, they may not go as hard as somebody in the top fifteen, but so it's hard to maintain a full time gig. Yeah. So that's where Cheech is, and in this prank phone call um <laughs> mr craig johnson called him out on being... i wanted to, i want you know what like when he told me that i really this is what i really wanted to say i'd like to drive zeke him. thurston why zeke in the thurston. world did i not I, that's my boy yeah i think Didn't it's because i was the world last year in the bronc riding uh yeah so zeke the reason why is because i was snapchatting clay elliott and both Super nice guys. I love both those guys. I was Snapchatting Clay and thinking about Zeke, but anyway. So back to uh, I wanted. And Craig. I wanted to. I just. I really wanted in my real mind. I wanted to drive to Lubbock, Texas, or wherever he was from. This Craig, uh, this Craig is from. And Craig, if you're the real Craig Travis, uh, Chavez, if you're watching this. 
Oh, See, that's like, what there messed was no him correlation. up. That's yeah. what messed him up. So uh, Randy had told she, unbeknownst to me, Randy had told Cheech about a different Craig in New Mexico yeah. who was going to get you to announce some rodeos. Yeah. So when we got on the phone, I just happened to be Craig, and I picked a town close to New Mexico. Yeah. And so you thought it was Randy's like Craig. Yeah, I thought it was. A, yeah, like. And, and you there. thought, oh, okay, well, the guy must not be from New Mexico. He just wanted to put some on. And so then you fed me that, and you were like, oh, you're gonna do some in New Mexico, and I was like, oh uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. of course, because I'm making it up on the spot, on the fly, yeah, like I, I do was everything. Giving you ammo to. Little did you in, know. Yeah. I mean, that's how we got started ten years ago, baby. Yeah. Like we're doing prank phone calls. Dude, I've been doing prank phone calls since before you're, cameras you're were since on. Since before the good, war. Dad. Since you, before the which war. Which were all of them. All of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like I've, I was listening to R.D. Mercer tapes when I was a kid. Like, I've been, I've been ready for this since day one. So, like, they put me on the phone with, and I, I so we used Mitchell's, Mitch Montgomery's phone. So you would, you know, 940 area code, and that way you would answer it. How worked up was Kelsey around you? Kelsey was at the trailer unsaddling a horse and she heard the phone call and she knew in my, it just in my mannerisms and the way I was handling, like she knew that I was aggravated, but I wasn't like going to like, should we break in this and and show all these listeners, give them this prank phone call? No, I think it's good. I think we're really good. It's time to move on. I'll put it at the end. How about that? All right. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the prank phone call at the end of this video slash podcast. So be ready. If if you're if you're that way, we can just you be the judge. Mm-hmm. Did I get him? I think I got him. He didn't get me. I was a professional during this whole thing. That's right, a professional. I handled it very. I handled it very professionally. I would say. So you did. Give me, if you can think of, in the last five years, the the five most mad moments you've had. Oh man! Where would that rank, or would it even be close to the top five? No, uh, not not really. It wouldn't even be. It would probably be, uh, like top one hundred or something. So it's in the top one hundred, yeah. but for it the w- past five years, yeah, not yeah. of all time. Yeah, I think the I think the maddest time that I the, like one of the times that I've really really just gotten just irked was I can't even re- okay. Um, Horses, horses can make me mad really fast. Smart horses, um, when they can figure out how to untie themselves. I have a horse right now at the house. <clears throat> His name's Nacho. He knows how to open gates and slide panels to get out. And so we live in a barn dominium, and he knows how to like slide the. He knows how to slide the panel, um, which I, I don't put a gate there because it's a it's an actual barn sliding door. Uh-huh. He knows how to slide them. And if you don't chain it, it's your own stupid fault. So if you don't chain it and lock it, he, he knows how to, like, he'll open it. And then you'll hear him in the middle of the night, his feet going on concrete. <laughs> and so, like, you're like, dang it. Who didn't, who didn't put the chain on this thing? And, like, he'll go out. And I'm going to tell you, like, he's like, I'm free, right? And then you go rattle a, a bucket. He's not coming to that bucket of feed because he's got grass right here and he's and he's free. And in about 15 minutes, when he figures out like that he can come back, he's like, "Okay, I'm back. I'm back yeah. now. Like, can you let me in?" So, that's the maddest. That's the top five in the um, last five years. Yeah, because it's it's me that because it, yeah. I, yeah, I don't that's know. Weak. I can't. I don't really know the, the really the maddest that I've been. I've been. I got mad at a guy. I don't want to tell the whole story, but essentially, he like tried to call me out on this deal. I had done him some favors and was using this deal and essentially for a shirt. And it was not that long ago. And he was kind of in the school of thought. What my thinking was, he kind of called me out on like using this thing for money that he was involved in. And, but the only reason it anyways long story short he was wrong and he kind of called me out for a quote unquote making money on it yeah and i had like not very many shirts like i wasn't going to make much money on this yeah. at all oh yeah i remember this and i was also living in my sister's office and this was not that long ago 
And so like I remember he that. was kind of in this little school of thought where he thought Dale Brisby was like this multi-millionaire behind the mm-hmm. scenes. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I got a full-time job doctoring yearlings. I get paid by the hour. I've got rent. Yeah. In my sister's office is where I live. Yeah. And I pay rent. She doesn't even let me live there for free. And anyways, Golly, she's I ended a up gangster. Mm. She's a G. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it it's a nice office. Yeah. So like I wasn't complaining. I enjoyed it very much. It's very simple, but it's at a grain elevator. And so like if your ass ain't up at six thirty in the morning, it's about to be. Cause them semi trucks start rolling in. And it's like you guys live kinda upstairs, so you heard all the like you had the, ex- the, yeah. the exhaust and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. So like, you're eye level with this semi truck. <laughs> you look over and the windows, and uh, but I, I was Doctor Yearland, so my alarm was set for four forty five anyway. So because I was mm-hmm. up there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm still lie to everybody <laughs> else. Don't lie to your friends. Me and you have been friends for a long time. Oh, you ain't got a lot of kick at DB. Um, yeah, it was set for four fifty. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, because I'd finally be out of bed by five, and then. Work out at 5.30, horse saddled by 6.45. Anyways, whatever. The point is, like I'd heard rumors of what people thought this Dale Brisby was making. I was like, I ain't making that, <laughs> you know. So I ended up just giving the shirt away. Yeah, I just gave the shirts away. But on the phone, that was probably, that's the top five. I think. Uh... So somebody like hits me up like, dude, I'm broke. I'm just a rodeo cowboy. On to the next one. You want to feed into that? It. That right there is what really that really makes me mad. Like, re, like that that right there. Um, similar situations though. What you were asking me about what what makes me really mad, and I and I tend I hold it in, y'all. I hold it in because people either call you know, either for a voiceover, for a rodeo, or for you to do your profession <clears throat> your professional service of whatever you do, and then like. They either like, ex- they're like expecting you like, for some unknown reason like, they 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 just want you to do it either for free yeah for cheaper than what you and you're like yeah dude like you called me, you called me but I got I got I gotta eat yeah I lot, and I think I mean? okay so I think that's where it got me was like it was like a subtle accusation of greed yeah and which couldn't be further from the truth like. I'm I'm literally just at that time trying to make ends meet. Yeah. And not even being greedy about it. Like the other day we did a giveaway. I had I counted it up. Two hundred and twenty five posts on my Instagram is was the previous time that I had talked about even having a website. Uh-huh. If so if you followed me on that first one, you would have had to have seen 225 posts before you knew that I sold a t-shirt. Yeah. And then I finally bring it up. And that's in a span of, you know, however many months, but whatever the point is. And most of those 225 posts are like, we're making funny videos. We're doing this. Anyways, whatever. It is a business. But at the end of the day, what I'm saying is like, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy employing people. I mean, like, look at this dude. I mean... This is a charity case if I've ever seen one. Like, and on this, I, 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 and I'll go ahead and say this on the record right quick because I know where you're going with this, but in no way, shape, or form is that like sounding like we're complaining. Cause no, I'm not complaining. Not compl- neither, and I, it I is a business. Say, yeah. But at the end of the day, especially at that time in my life, like somebody like hitting me up and accusing me of that, I'm just like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, wait. <laughs> this I'm is out. my actual got... living situation. Yeah. Like, this is the broke-ass truck I drive. Yeah. <laughs> I got holes in the floor of my truck. All I got is this truck and trailer, Yeah. two good horses. Shortly after that, one of them died. So, <laughs> so I got a truck, a trailer. I had a truck, a trailer, and Boone. Donnie. <laughs> and the, that's what I had to my name. Period. Yeah. End of story. I didn't have, you know, anyways, whatever. But... That was probably the maddest. When's the maddest? What's the maddest you've been? Enough about me. Maddest I've been? Donnie. Sometime in the bar, for sure. Probably. Oh, yeah, you used to run that bar. Yeah, there was this dude. Up in that beard joint. There's this dude one night. I don't know if this is the maddest I've ever been, but this is the first one that comes to mind. 
This dude comes in. It's we close at one thirty. He walks in about one fifteen, and I'm already like shooing people out the door, like putting chairs up and stuff. And this dude walks in. And he's like, "I'm like, hey man, sorry, but we're getting ready to close." You mean tell me I can't get something to eat? I said no. <laughs> I said kitchen's been closed since two o'clock this afternoon. He's like, I'm from Southside Chicago, and I was like, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts running his mouth. And my dad was like, dad was there, and he like jumps on it right away, and like, he was pretty big. This guy was, yeah, and he had a. A little friend with him too. It was like Uh-oh. it was like just two of them. Though? The little guy wasn't mouthing. Yeah, it was only two of them, and they weren't from around there. Yeah, and we had friends there. I wasn't really that worried about it. I was just mad because he just like I was not expecting this. Like, you were... it, I was getting. Her, I was winding down. I was ready to go home, and this dude just fires at me. I'm from Southside, like Southside Chicago. Like I, that means something to me. I don't really care. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. That we... was just the first one that come to mind. Yeah. Just someone I don't even know. Like just right. Yeah, I can see that because like some people as some people as customers in a facil- in a place like that, they just think that oh, they they want you are a servant. Yeah, give me like yeah. now. I'm and sim- they think they're the only person in there. Like, yeah, I'm sympathetic to or empathetic to I think store owners that like I don't I don't expect somebody to jump to my Especially in a bar at one forty five. Like yeah. that's late. Yeah. I feel like last night was different. They oh, normally yeah. close at nine. Yeah. They change their times to eight. And we go in at eight so. fifteen. I just feel like she could have been just a little nicer. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like and she's I was like, Hey, we close at eight. Like as if we, I shouldn't like I should exist. Like, like okay. Okay. <laughs> like I'm the idiot. Yeah. But there's two sides of it, you know, yeah, like absolutely. If it had been me, like the old Cheech back in the day, I'd have been in there before the drink specials were happening and been through there all the way till like waited till like ten thirty. You know what am I like I really used to like to do this. I used to see if they would really reopen the kitchen for like a like a pizza or something. And if the answer was no, I was okay with it because uh-huh. I knew that it was like the answer was no. Mm-hmm. But if I could talk them into it, it was just a challenge within me. Like, I don't know. It's just what I, it's, I would make a, pizzas all the time because we just had a pizza oven, yeah. like you, like frozen pizza, throw them in the pizza oven. I this would do that so all night long. Blaine's Pub, Blaine's Pub in San Angelo, like like that place right there. He doesn't know. You're pointing at him like we're gonna, we're gonna, we're going to go. I'm going to take you there one day. But anyway, um, that place kept me. Free. Raise boom boom room. Raise, <laughs> raise boom boom room. Yeah, uh, there ain't no such thing as the boom boom room. Hey, what? <laughs> Shut up, Claude. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> Shut though, up, really. Claude. <laughs> like they're all over there daydreaming, and Claude's like, "What you? What you talk? Shut up, Claude! Like let him talk. Let him tell the story." Like I was saying, Sashmo was up in there last night. Sashmo was up in there last night. Oh. She almost blew the roof off the place. I love that movie. That's that one of my favorite gr- movies. Great movie. It's one of my top three movies. It's of all time. it. Oh, it makes me so uncomfortable at the beginning whenever they get falsely accused though like i just once i get past that part because i just feel so bad for him even knowing it's a dang movie you yeah. know i'm just like oh um guys you've been making some really big uh you've been making some big moves in the bronc riding world they oh, trying man. man yeah i seen i seen uh the video check out um, this picture check out this picture i'm gonna show you this picture we got last night sorry that um you should be sorry, telling me sorry, because I'm sorry for the those of us listening, but uh, I'll describe the picture. Like you didn't um, I'm text just kind of showing a picture of nobody lets me know when you guys are gonna do this. And dude, yeah, come on yeah, back. Look well, at, I mean, I, look I at Donny D. That was last night. That's his fifth. Donny D. You're yeah. setting him yeah. right there, trying. Yeah. So I wanna, when uh, I want to see that rain just poked out there a yeah, little bit more, I'm but pulling on it a little bit. That's 180 degrees. Like he just made a 180 turn. That's still a bad to the bone picture for number. F- that's their fifth bronc, man. So, what's your goal, like, what, dude? What do you think? Like, when's your first rodeo? Do you I think you? I don't know. Amateur rodeo. That's that's kind of in the back of my mind. Yeah. Rodeo, like horses, is what's like, numbers of horses is what's yeah, on my just mind getting right on now. Horses. Seventy-five yeah. to a hundred horses in the next year would like. I I'd like to at least, I'd say. Yeah. I like. I want to go to my first rodeo and just be confident. 
Like, yeah. know what I'm doing. I don't want to. That's a, that's that's kind of like the same concept I've had in my mind. Ultimately, I think about team roping and steer roping. Yeah, like I'm not <clears throat> going to a steer roping, and I'm what not makes going you want to do two events? I think because there's so many guys in team roping. There's a lot of guys that I mean, it's like the biggest, it's the fastest and largest growing uh, discipline and event in the Western industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, steer roping is a very, there's a very it's a narrow, niche, it's, yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, like, I just want to do two because I've always I've been around both of them, but yep. I haven't been able to work on e- either one of them for a long time, just because, you know, like we're trying to grow uh, in so many different ways, you know, personally, uh, financially, <gasps> and then in the world of team roping. Who are you working and, with? Who's helping you on your team roping? Uh, so I go over to uh, a friend of mine, Steve Neely's and Robert Robertson. Mm-hmm. Robert Who Robertson. Else? Uh, actually, I, you know what? Th- those are the only two guys. Oh, okay, there's not any other big names. No, I mean like, I give Trevor. I give Trevor. Oh, some yeah. What's that guy's name? Yeah. What's his last name? Uh, yeah. I think Brazil. I. Brazil. Snippy. Oh, Snappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slimmy. Yeah, Slimmy. Yeah, yeah, Sam- nice. Samsonite. Uh, Samson, yeah. Trevor Samsonite. Yeah, Trevor Samsonite. Me, yeah. Me and Leroy rode on. We had we had a flight home with him from the NFR. Really? Yeah. Was he not like the funnest guy? Yeah, he's, we we didn't sit next to him, but we talked to him in the terminal. Super super good dude. Yeah. Super chill. I was over. Very was witty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, very witty. You don't. Yeah, I asked. Sometimes when day. you talk to Trevor, like, <clears throat> I don't know, having employees, especially employees like Donnie. Yeah. What does that mean? I like to. Like, what do you mean, like Donnie? <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to explain it. Okay. When you got an employee like Donnie. And you go in to explain something like you want him to accomplish this task. Like, yeah, I like to talk to Donnie as and explain to him as if I'm talking to a fifth grader. No, you know, like he can read but, uh, and he's going to understand most things. Like, but a fifth grader, third grade, simple is a saying, you know. And so you start out here, and then you know you go up a grade. He accomplishes this yeah. task, and then you go up a grade, and all of a sudden, so now I'm explaining things to Donnie. You know, about tenth grade. Dude, you've literally told me before I'm too smart for my own good. Mm, you have said have that I, before. Have that, I? That has come out of your mouth. When you talk to Trevor, yes, you can tell. Like, he'll start a sentence, and like you can tell really quick, very fast. That like when if, exactly if everyone's yep. talking like this, he's on this other level. Mm-hmm. Like he has. He's assumed you understand this much, and he's talking up here. That's that's what I get out of Trevor. Like you got to catch up. Very much so, because you know, like Trevor, he because he ain't gonna wait for you either. No, he's gonna keep talking, and if you if you get lost, then he and Trevor. I've seen Trevor there at the house. As a matter of fact, I was there yesterday. But when people come over to his house, this is this is the thing. Uh, and Trevor, when you listen to this. If you have any, just leave it in the comments below. It'll be. It'll I'm perfect. sure he will. Yeah. He's a diehard fan. Uh, so no surprise. Trevor takes people and he takes them. Either, he figures out where they're at, uh-huh. and I have watched him. He'll take a mental mental note, and he'll he'll watch somebody and not. He's you're you're exactly like where he's he's like up here, but he can he's so good at what he does that he can just gear down and go to this person and say hey be more aggressive with your hand or use your right foot or be more when you get up there quit you you stop riding you you quit riding your horse he's just but but then but then once you get it all figured out everybody's laughing grinning and you get it figured out it's the little victories like he'll say the, all the little victories because a lot of what we you know on the time event side it's very mental, but it's also physical. But it might be a li- it, little things. Yeah, with bull riding, it's more. It's ninety percent mental. Yeah, and the rest is in your head. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. It's mental, and then it's in your head, right? Like, yeah. Who's this guy? Oh. Anyway, Trevor. So, though, so when you anyways, ask him, when's the next? When's the next roping you're going to? When, uh, when are you going to enter a rodeo, and who are you going to enter with? I don't think I'm going to enter this year. Hmm. I don't really, honestly, I'm going to work on. I'm gonna well, there's on. nothing wrong with that because yeah. there's not a lot of places to go. If I can get on Bronx and practice pins, I, I'm fine without going to a rodeo until 2021. Yeah, yeah. Being patient and working on. Yeah, because I doing. I want to show up. I want to be. I want guys to be like, where did this guy come from? You know, like, yeah. hey, this guy's riding Bronx. Like, I don't know. 
I don't I I like where your head's at. I think you can get a long ways in 90 days. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And there's nothing wrong with going somewhere because you've already been on horses you might see at a rodeo. Right. So like I I don't I wouldn't want to see I just don't want to see you limit yourself too much. Right. You know, I don't I think you should play it by ear and we're not going to enter you in something that you're that's over your head. Mm-hmm. But there may be a spot where it's like such and such Amy rodeo here or there, and it's mid September. Because I mean, mid September that's that's getting your last bronze in. That's ninety five. days. Yeah. yeah, you know. And if we, if you if you're able to get on, let's say an average once a week, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that's twelve. If you get on two, that's twenty four. That'd be thirty bronx. If you can get thirty bronx under your belt in ninety days, I don't. There's no telling. Yeah, true that. I don't. I just don't think it would hurt to to duck off to one, mm. and it let it be a benchmark of like where am I at? Yeah. I don't think you should go to twenty six in September and October because yeah. you you're just gonna run yourself out of money. Yeah. If money was no objects, I'd say go to twenty six. And that was my th- that's my thing about like. Uh, saying like you're asking me when my next where am i gonna go or put money up i don't want to go and enter a rodeo or a jackpot or anything like that i think until i'm if i'm gonna put money down i want to i'm gonna be mentally confident that i know that i'm at least uh gonna have a yeah very competitive Uh, that's what i'm it is about it is about who all's entered you know like some of these rodeos they got they're maxing it out like coleman this weekend which i'll be there friday um, y'all come see me. Coleman has sixty two bronc riders. Yeah. In in the in a little PRCA in three perfs. Yes. And so like that's the other thing. You you don't necessarily like for instance, Stanford coming up on the fourth of July. I might uh-huh. go over there. But that's that that's gonna if that has twelve bronc riders in each perf, you know, that may not need to be your first rodeo. Yeah. You know. Or post. Yeah. Or Yeah. 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 <laughs> no. I think that that's good though. I think that, like, I watched the videos of. of but I'm just trying to take it really seriously because, like. But man, you want to talk about make you crave it? Absolutely. Yeah. Like yeah. if you go to a rodeo and you feel it, and all of a sudden, like, you get that, it's so much easier. Your heart gets pumping. Now, if you can get your heart pumping and you can execute in a practice pen, when you get to a rodeo, it's 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 gonna be a breeze. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Talk to. Well, I don't know who else you could talk to but besides the greatest bull rider in the world. But and that would be? That would be me, old son. Oh, yeah. okay. I, was just, I thought maybe like JB or... Yeah. No, I've had someone helping me. Like Jacob Scrawley, he, he's, oh, okay. yeah, he's yeah, been yeah, coming yeah. around yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. So, like, that is whose saddle the you're two, in. Uh, yeah. He's in Jacob's original saddle. So I've been just the really... Two gingers. God, that freaking... Yeah, maybe that's why you connect with him. He's maybe. short and he's a ginger. Yeah, I, those are your words. That somewhere. saddle fits those horses like a dream. If it wasn't, I think if it were smaller, he'd probably still be in it. But anyway. I also know that you guys, y'all, been getting to spend a little, a lot of time together. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. hey, we got a new intern coming on Monday. Really? Yeah, yep. he should come back on Monday. Yeah, I plan yeah. on coming back at least once or twice a week. Yeah, you should you should come back on Monday. We'll plan on bucking that day, yeah. and uh, we'll see. If we'll... I don't know. I got a pretty packed schedule. You know, like brand repping for rodeo time is just. And then you got Craig's deals. And Craig's deals, and yeah. um, you know, brand repping is, is is been fun though. It really has been, but Craig. He's been blowing my phone up. Okay. Yeah. What do you have to say to this intern? If you could before he's going to be here Sunday evening. Like if he if he were to he's dri- imagine him driving here. Okay, he's listening to this podcast in the truck on on Sunday and like you got one last chance to give him any information possible. Where is he from? Let's, let me he's ask from Texas. It. Prosper, north of Dallas. Oh. He so. sent in a video. It's pretty so good. you can still still send him videos like this intern. Like he goes, he's going to go to college in the fall, so he's only going to be here for two months. So, but what he did was, um, 
he tried to send his video via Instagram. And we were very specific in the last podcast. Like, hey, if you don't if you if you don't care enough to send us a video, like we're probably not gonna just sit there and just DM you all day. Like you gotta send a video to Rodeo Time. So we wanted you to follow directions. There are exceptions to the rule. For instance, this guy sent in a YouTube video. He's like, Hey, Instagram won't let me go over a minute. So he edited a YouTube video, it was like three oh. minutes. And he sent it to us, gave us all the reasons why he would be the best intern. It was, he made it all about like how he's going to bring us value. It wasn't like, I need this, I need that, you know. Do you I, feel like Deal breaker, was... I got to bring my dog. Like, if that's a deal breaker, the, the deal has been broken. Because we don't have a place for a dog. But, so anyways, like he, he sent this video in and we were like, immediately, I'm 30 seconds in. I'm like, all right, this guy's in the top five. He legitimately went and just did almost, I would say, the Gary V blueprint, went and executed, put it in the work, and, like, sent it to you, and this is how you came up with. Yep. And, hey, that's what Garrett Kelly did, too. Yeah, he sent I remember me, that. He sent me a DVD because he didn't know how to put it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. <laughs> and so I was, like, immediately, I was, like, all right, come on. What talents did he did he explain? In, did he have any talents in the Western industry or, um, or any just talents in general? Well, so he gets on bulls. Okay. He's only been on like 20. Huh. Um, he was actually so doing honest. fence okay. work in this video uh. and kind of making jokes about it, which is great because we make videos. So, But the way he's handling this wire, I could tell he savvies a little bit. And so, um, you know, he's... I will never... He just, there were some nuances in there that showed me he... He's got the the bare minimum at least. So he wants to learn how to sit a horse better. He wants to, and then I had to tell him like, listen, because there's been interns come here. Donnie can maybe talk about this, but like, when the Snapchat like for some reason people thinks we don't we don't do crap. I know. Yes. Know? So <laughs> like that was gonna be my next thing. I had to call him. I'm like, okay, please don't assume that all we do is Snapchat, like sleep till 10, Snapchat a few times, yeah, go take a no. nap, eat lunch, come back, Snapchat some, like, if we're not on camera, yeah. we're working, you know? And he was like, yeah, I kind of assume that, so. Because there's been some guys come here that thought it was going to be a party. Like, yeah, yeah. it's just never, never land. Yeah. Yeah. Just hanging out. Walked out of the bunkhouse at 1030. Me and Leroy had been up for four hours putting out hay. And I was like, hey, bud, that ain't going to work. <laughs> I think, you know what, like really though, I, I think that I, I get that question asked a lot. I really do. Um, do they not do anything? Yeah. And I feel bad because sometimes like like I'll have friends. They're like, what are you doing Tuesday at 2.30? I'm yes. like, I'm freaking working. And then I think about it and I'm like, well, if they look at my Snapchat, it sure doesn't look like that. Well, so, yeah. And so a lot of people are like, Man, you and that Dale Brisby and that other boy that down in Daytona, y'all. I mean, that other, just, boy. that other boy that 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 guy, he did. He told me his, I was y'all don't do station. shit, do you? Yeah, no, he's like y'all, y'all just living it up over. Y'all how just does, having all fun. I'm like, how I'll just joke? hit a lick. Do you do you know? Do you know? Like nobody thinks that it's funny too. It's just like oh, he makes all that money on YouTube. A year, yeah, a year ago or two years ago, I don't remember. What, what I make it was. on YouTube wouldn't pay for Donnie's salary do you remember when we filmed the uh the steer wrestling video when when you yeah yeah, yeah. kicked me out okay yes so that i remember that day specifically uh-huh. that's when i had only been here for like two weeks two or three weeks. yeah but it was like a hundred degrees and uh-huh. we filmed three videos that day yeah that was hot we we filmed three videos while yeah. it was hot and we just like we point in tune is that it's not all blow pops and daisies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. And again, like you said earlier, we're not complaining. No. Now, I'm not complaining. I'll do it right now. I like, freaking love it. I'll, but I'll go, yeah. It's also not sleep till 10. And Really, the only time that I do get a break is when I'm on the road. Dude, I love being on the road. And that's what I have missed the most. About. Yeah. I think driving the booths back like, like at night. When you are forced to spend four hours in a hotel... And I can't work outside. I can't work in the warehouse. We don't. We're. It's not really a very conducive environment to film. Yeah. I'll still find something to do because yeah. I enjoy it. But like, there's just you got to sit there for three hours in the evening after a booth. Like that's 
that that's that's the only time we really get. I a think break. the booth though is where that I'm gonna, and I'm gonna be honest. Like, if an intern came here and goes to the booth and thinks like, "Oh man, we're just gonna sit in that booth." Like, to right. me, to me, that's my weak spot, and I want to like, I want to, I'm gonna get, I'm getting better at being at the booths, uh-huh. but like. When you tear that booth down, it's getting it. Oh like, yeah, it's you're getting it. And then, and then I think I remember this. Like the one booth that I absolutely loved was because I was, I was by myself, tore the booth down. You had gone to, uh, you had kind of left me hanging actually, uh, to go to <laughs> Canada. Oh yeah, Pinoca. You went to Pinoca. Yeah, you were at the junior high finals. We loaded it up, and I drove back uh, all the way, and I just I was like, I'm having so much fun. Even though I wasn't headed to a rodeo, but I was headed yeah. back from one, like it was just fun. The road is the road is I love it. I can, yeah. I it, the booth being at the booth is okay. Like that's fine. But I don't I don't know just something about being on the road. So the other misconception about being here is the ranch inside of it, uh, and they yeah. think that they're literally gonna drag calves every day, I, every day. That's pretty funny. And I gotta <laughs> explain to them. Listen. With the exception of the Wagner Ranch, they they they're they're doing spring works for like three months out of the year. Like they've const- they've got two crews going at a time. Like all of it's a huge ranch. But yeah. like Pitchfork, I think Tongue River, I think it takes them two weeks, two full weeks. Pitchfork, I think it takes them a month. Um, the sixes in Guthrie takes them a month. The sixes at Dixon Creek takes them two weeks. Like. And these are the, some of the biggest ranches. I don't know anything about the King Ranch, but these are some of the biggest ranches in Texas. And they're doing it for two weeks. So, like, we're not even, first of all, we're not going to go there. I'm just using that as an example. Second of all, like, you don't just, you're not horseback every, every day. single day. Even yeah. guys that work on those ranches, like, there's days where all they do is put out mineral. They're fixing fence on their camp. Like, I, that's not, like, you're not going to come to, Winnebago, Texas, and be horseback with me six days a week. I would you can say get tell horseback. You, I would tell you, like, these feet were not made for walking. They were made for dangling. There's just some, there's some, <laughs> there's some times a year, out. even on the biggest ranches, where you just let a cow be a cow. Yeah. And you don't have to be out there. You don't have to. And, and so on even smaller ranch. Now, if you want to know how big Radiator Ranch is, just whatever head, whatever number of cows you have in your mind, times it by 100, and that's probably getting close to what I have. So it's bigger than the, it's probably bigger than the Wagner. So what you're saying? Like it's the it's, Wagner it's is It's not the as big biggest. as the Wagner, but I'll tell you that's only by choice. Oh, uh, gotcha. So but the point is is like when you come here and uh-huh. you're at the bottom of the totem pole, you may have to do actual work. Folding clothes, <laughs> fence building. Um, what like? I, I mean, maybe load the booth up before it goes to a booth. So Unload this guy, one thing he's going to have to do immediately is help finish build the round pin. It's tie up cedar stays. Really? Yeah. Why do you want to do it? No, I mean, my excited, hands are already dude. sore. Like I actually kind of like doing it when it seriously when it's my idea. Oh yeah, yeah. When it's my when okay. you're doing something like <laughs> like, like I put my earphones. I'll let in. you think that it's your idea, but this is my idea. <laughs> so they're but pretty fair. When I got in trouble when I was a kid, for real. When I got in trouble when I was a kid, my granddad like whipping. They found that whippings didn't work, so he would treat me like a bad colt. He would I, he would make me pick tie leads. you up to the side of the pen. No, for no. Well, I mean, days. not not kind of. He would just he would he was the mental game, and so he he would make me pick up rocks and put them in a pile, or make me pick weeds, or uh, dig post holes, and uh, or rebuild patch fence. Oh, I hated that stuff. I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now it's like it's a walk in the park. Like I, I don't personally like just want to go build fence, but when it's my idea, sorry, I go to clear my head. Yeah. yeah. It's it's satisfying to like see a broken down water gap or a hole in the fence or whatever. You get the wire stretchers, you start over and then you get done and you've got all the 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 wires on the post the right way and and then you look at it and you're like that that's gratifying. I just think that you did it wrong though. The 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 round pin. I'm just going to say it. Like I'm just going to 
verbal. You think I should have put the post on the outside? No. No, you just used the... For those of y'all that are looking at this round pin and anybody that's going to go tie cedar stays, you use the skinny ones. You use the skinny ones, so it's going to take a lot of them. So you're going to be there for a long time. We could have used the bigger ones. I did use big ones. You did? Dude, yeah, they're, they're some of them are like eight inches. Thick? Yeah. Yes. I didn't see that. Like some of the, the smallest I'm gonna posts go. are four oh, inches. Bigger, right? These are not stays. Oh, okay. These and are... some of them, like one of them was 16 foot. I, like big oh. freaking posts. <laughs> like, he had to cut it. <laughs> but guess what? He did cut it in half. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he cut like four foot got off. Him. <laughs> Donnie got a kick out of that. Because yeah. the, the top rail is six foot. And yeah. so they all just need to be taller than six foot. And you cut so four. He, no, no, I didn't. Uh, Wes <laughs> cut four foot off of the 16 posts instead of cutting it at eight and making two out of it. So what did you? What did y'all do? What did y'all? Do I didn't say Wes? anything. Donnie I, just thought it. Did was y'all funny. leave it? No, he was like, he was like, yeah, I got the rest of it. He, he was like, are you sure it was 16 foot? He's like, yeah, I got the rest of it in the back of my truck. I was like, why didn't you just cut it in half? Then you would have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I didn't say anything to Wes. Donnie just thought got a kick out of that. It's not that big a deal. I just thought it was funny. It. I mean, it's a little thing. Yeah, it is kind of funny, but I think the other. So thing- these posts that I got got cut off a of buddy's ranch yeah. seven years ago. Oh, they're still yeah. Great. So I've been having them a while. For a They've been minute, stacked up on the like- back of because my buddy called me. He's like, "Hey, you want these posts, man? I just we're clearing this place off and they look good. And I got them for like three bucks each." So Dang I was like, right. yeah, of course. I knew one day, You're like I'm be. that kind of guy. Like I'll buy a post for $3. Like Seven investing. years yeah. later, I, I build this round pin. Come to find out I only had enough for half the round pin. So I have to buy these other posts at full price, you know. And um, But they are very fresh. The old posts sitting there seven years, this bark, like you just got to shake the post and the bark will fall off. These yeah. new ones... That like sticky. They were cut literally ten days ago. Yeah. They're cut. They were alive. 10 Pretty days sappy. Ago. Very sappy. So like Wes gets done at the end of the day, and he's just got sap all over his arms, and his chest is breaking out, and <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyways, hopefully the, the the intern doesn't listen to this podcast. But he's literally more than halfway done. So, however long it's taken, Wes, you, the new guy, he's got, and he's got to help film too. Um, and like, just like, you got to come in here. I feel like I've seen every intern come through here. I've seen pretty much every intern. Yeah. Through here. Dean. Dean. Garrett Kelly. Mm-hmm. Sam. Sam. Sam kind of looks like Who him. else? Sam doesn't look like me at all. <laughs> uh, Wes and me. Wes and you. Yeah, and Wes and Lane. Now nah, that was a different. That was under a different. Company. That was under a different regime. Lane. Well, yeah. Like if you want to count all, another regime. one would be Lane and uh, Pony Boy, and then uh, Greaser worked for me. He wasn't an intern. Greasy baby. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Uh, as far as like number of people who's worked for me over the years, though, it's been about twenty two. But interns, technically, only interns, five? like unpaid, it's been five. So. <laughs> I think you got to come here with an open mind. Donnie, you... I think 18 of those... No, 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 no. 16 of those 22, though, were rodeo cowboys. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think I think the thing about being an intern at Winnebago is like... It's, it, it's, it's kind of like um, you're coming here maybe uh, to get a fresh start or to... You feel like you want to do so, you don't want to do something different in your life, but come in here open minded and like you you've come here and done so many different things. Like you wanted to learn how to ride horses, you wanted to learn how to do all that. Like you were open minded and you didn't like you were honest, um, and and just you didn't come here thinking like yeah I'm a bronc rider I'm a bronc rider and then all of a sudden you get out there just get whopped and just <laughs> well yeah and then and then all of a sudden uh, you know three or four days later like. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm bronc rider, and then all of a sudden, when it comes time to get on, I'm like, oh man, I'm kind of injured, or no, nah, I don't really feel like getting on. Like, it's been you're you're full hearted, but at the same time, open minded. And I think, dude, what we need out here is is 
a bull rider. Like, if you think Bowman. about it, like, we need somebody who's, like, kind of been on maybe 100 head and <clears throat> hungry, like, yeah. willing to get on anything, but I need to tell him, like, okay, you need to back up and get on something lesser today. Like, that's the kind of – we need a bull rider who's, like, kind of like or, – or just where Donnie's at in the bronc riding. You could have been on 10 or 20, but super hungry because I got four bulls that are bad to the bone practice bulls. Yeah. And one of them's like lower end of a high school pin. The other one is top end of a high school pin. And two of them would be like good college rodeo bulls or Amy rodeo bulls. And so a guy could come here, live. I'd let you, you know, you could buck bulls twice a week. You could work here and then go to rodeos. And then a guy just let me know, like, don't leave me hanging out to dry. Like if we got something planned and then you just leave. But usually when people work here, they're like, all right, I'm going to need these, these, this, this, and this day off. I'm like, okay, cool. Cause you know, and then, all right, you know, might pay you this, you know, for two weeks, uh, you know, a week or so vacation days in in a year. But like, eventually it's just like, you're going to take off those days. Well, I'm not going to pay you for those days. It doesn't matter to me if you leave, you know, anyway, we just lost. Your we just camera. lost camera one. We just okay. lost camera one. <laughs> so, sorry, guys. You're going to have to just look at me and Donnie. But anyway, I think this would be a bull rider's paradise. Not to mention you get guys like J.B. Mooney coming in. Mm-hmm. And he – now, granted, J.B.'s not going to sit there and talk to you for 45 minutes. But he'll he, – He will if he likes you, I think. Like, if he – if I don't know. I think, I think 18 minutes is a yeah, stretch. Yeah, yeah. You get that. on two or three bulls, he's going to be like, you're doing this wrong. And you're doing this yeah, wrong. Absolutely. Fix it. That's what he's gonna mm-hmm. say. But at least he's not gonna like. That's gonna, what I like about. He ain't JB. gonna blow smoke yeah, up your skirt. Absolutely. And that's bull riding, bronc riding. You know, he'll get a little bit of help from. And I don't like to. I'm not gonna promise these guys that like Jacobs Crawley is gonna come here and give you a day. But Jacobs is the kind of guy if he's around, and he likes you. But. He'll give you 18 minutes. But the, but the, sure. here's the thing about that. Like in my – And is, bareback riders, I can find a bareback rider too. Tilden Hooper comes over here. He helped Coy, came over here and helped Coy. I think, I think what people need to realize, I think younger guys, younger guys that are wanting to intern, you got to think about it. You got to think about it like this. When some of the best guys in the world are coming to help you get on, that's your tuition fee. Like your tuition is um, you're going to school. That's not a quiet door. <laughs> Sup, Leroy. Hi. Sup, Leroy. Morning. What time is it? Lunchtime. Sorry. Eleven thirty-five. All right, I'll be I'll be right there. We're almost okay. done. Okay. But I think I think that um, if I were younger and I wasn't already the greatest bull rider of all time at such a young age like i, I was great Give at nine s- i didn't need but if i were younger i would pay me to come be here now i'm not going to ask people to pay me. you took the exact thing that i was saying i like, would you pay, pay to go to college you're gonna i'm like, not gonna ask you to pay me but if i were me knowing what we have here I would pay me. You're so vain right now. To work everything here. right now, dude. That convince every, me. Every every. Tell me okay. I'm wrong. E- tell every me why intern I'm wrong. right now that is watching the, or potential in- intern right now. Possible new intern. Possible new intern. P and I. That's right. Th- this guy right here. The the. This guy right here saying what he's saying is like don't 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 do that. Don't do. That. I don't know, man. Don't like, pay me. No no no. Like don't. I'm the greatest bull rider of all. I mean. Oh well, we, yeah. It, if you because you're not. It's wrote on just about every wall in yeah, this place. No, that's good I mean, advice to them because they're yeah. not. Because I am. The point is, like, do you think? Do you agree? Like, I mean, it's just like you. Yeah. Like, I know. you're you're trying to be a team roper, and you you're hanging team out with Trevor different. Brazil. Yeah. You don't. You go there, and you will pull the dummy if he asks you to pull that dummy. Yeah. And he asks you to go. Then sit you'll on that polish head. that some buck. Then you'll you'll clean out his knowledge, tack room. Knowledge. I won't clean his tack room because I've already tried to trade him out of some things out of his tack room, and he, I think he's just a little high on some of it. I think he's a lot high on some of his stuff, but I just – so I left it alone. I'm going to wait till next month, and then I'll approach him again. That's the other thing that – So, I anyways, like the point is we got an intern. We did fill a position. I'm looking for bringing on a second one while he's here. 
we're going to fix up rodeo blues where a guy can stay in there and then but we're also going to have to replace him so keep sending in videos also text me 940-353-0890 text your boy dale brisby and um it, it might take me a couple days to text you back but um I, I got a lot. I stopped kind of telling people. I don't mind people knowing the number, but I, I Snapchatted it a few times and I've gotten thousands of texts and I'm trying to respond to all of them. That's why I took a break from telling people just because like if I get 2,500 that add me in a couple of days, like I can't get back to all of them. But if you'll just stay on me and if you really, and then what, what you should do is here's a hack. It's like if you want to work here, um, send a video to Rodeo Time. Maybe make one for YouTube. Um, and then, on my most recent post on Dale Brisby, comment on that and tell me and Donnie like, "Hey, go okay. check out my video. It's really cool." Because sometimes you know we might get three hundred DMs in a day. Donnie can only check one hundred and twenty six of them, and so that's going to leave two hundred and seventy four unanswered. What do 174, you... 174, like, unanswered. Just really quick, Damn. just really, really quick, both of you guys, just real real fast. What what do you think you guys really look for? What's the first three things you look for in a, in a potential uh, intern? Follow directions. Explain how you're going to bring us value. Yeah. Now, when you get here, I'm not saying, like, I'm going to make you a slave. I told this intern on the phone. I was like, look, what I want to start is a competition – you try to bring me more value than I do you, and I'm going to tr- make sure I bring... He ain't going to leave here. He might think that he brought me more value than I did him, but I'm going to make sure that we both feel that way. Donnie, I'm going to try to. How do you feel like an intern brings you value, so you coming out of that's that That's the intern. second thing yeah. in the video. First thing, send a video. Second thing, um, be outgoing. You know, if, if you're outgoing, be it took funny. It me a while to be outgoing. And... Get to where because we obviously have cameras on, mm-hmm. so we can't have a mute person. Um, those two things, like show, if you have any knowledge of the industry, like let me know. Don't give me false deals. Like if you can drive a stick, let me know. If you can back up a trailer, like that's what I would do. If I was making a video for me, I would make a video <laughs> that said, like. <laughs> I can ride bulls. I can back up a trailer. I can drive a stick. I can uh, I can mow the lawn. I'll so fold, like let me know you'll do anything. I'll have, fold a t shirt. I'll I'll freaking I'll do the electrical show up in this deal. With a notebook full of like I come with directions here. These are the things that I can do, and these are my other bugaboos right here that I can't do. And that that is one thing. Like there was like Wes, he said, like he learned pretty quick. He didn't like being in a warehouse. And he didn't want to be in the warehouse. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so he he's not anymore in the warehouse. And but because it's he was also here a year, and there was a time in there where he would and do anything. And so that's why it was like okay, like he you know, because there's certain times there's any job you're in there's gonna be things that you don't want to do that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Like. There's certain times where I don't want to send emails for three and a half hours, but I have to because I got to coordinate with certain people about different events or whatever. But I, so anyways. Tell no about the flood. Also. I'm kind of getting off on a tangent. I'm That's okay. Excited. And uh, I'm excited for, I'm excited for new blood to come to rodeo time. And then if somebody's like, somebody comes in and they're like DM me and they're like, Hey, yeah, it'd be cool to be an intern, but I am a graphic designer. I can run a camera. Or I can, uh, you know, manage your whatever. And they're like, and and then they say like, I, this is how I'm bringing you value. Then all of a sudden it might be a conversation where it's like, okay, you're obviously not going to work for free for two weeks. Right. Like a normal intern would. Yeah. Before you start getting paid. I think I worked for free for like two months. You came in at an unusual time where, number one, we only we already had an intern. Yeah. yeah, there was another guy here who was working for free. Um, yeah, that was really all all that was unusual. We didn't need to as there, much help then as we had. I let you come at the time because I I knew by your video I was like. 
this guy seems legit. Like I gotta, I gotta, I'm not going to turn him away. And so you came and I was like, you are legit, but I definitely don't need an extra hand. Then what he did, he was legitimately willing to do anything. And he came in here one day and uh -huh. he impressed our warehouse manager. And she was like, yeah, we got to keep it. We got to have him. And immediately he got a job and he's had one ever since. Then, so you didn't you went from like intern to full time. You didn't go from like intern to part time to full time. Like, no, he went from intern to full time. Yeah. Boom. But yeah. then he also, um, then he wanted to learn to edit. Yeah. Guess what? We put out videos every single day. Made himself very valuable. So then he got a raise. So Donnie has, because he, you know, he he saw that the company had needs. And he's decided to meet those needs. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. But Donnie's man. down for whatever. He's I just all want to ride Bronx. He's yeah, and that's his ultimate goal. And and, in that and I know riding. that. Yeah. And there's gonna come a time when Donnie wants to leave for two and a half weeks to go ride Bronx. And I'm no, gonna say, vacation time is not gonna be permitted. I'm gonna say, do your deal. Donnie doesn't ever take off. He's still yeah. got vacation days this year. You do, Donnie. Some people use them up real quick. Donnie has not. <laughs> no, like I would never. Like I, I see from the outside in, and then I see from the inside out. Like, but, but like that's the thing about working for a radio cowboy. Like, you know, like I'm going to be understanding. Like, yeah, you come back and you're sore, and like it's you're not going to get fired. The Craig that prank called me wasn't very understanding. No. no. Speaking of. We've got that coming up next. Sit back for these next 10, 15 minutes and listen to how well Chicho Nation handled the call Craig. with Craig. I'm going to call Craig back one day and I'm going to ask him how his rodeos are. Maybe I'm going to call Craig back and I'm going to ask him. Flourishing. Yeah. They've had rodeos during all this downtime. See how his rodeos. You would have had jobs. Yeah. And, and you would have already made. I'm going to build a home with you, Craig. I want to, you know, he, I want to He build probably a would have been paying you 5000 a night. Yeah. You missed out. All I was asking. I talked to Craig yesterday. That's what he told me. Tell Cheech he missed out. Yeah. He could have been part of the CRAP. <laughs> More to come. <laughs> Y'all sit back and watch how professionally I handled it. Here we go. Oh, oh, we got somebody calling. Hey man, this is uh, this is Craig. How are you? Man, I'm doing good, Craig. How are you, sir? I'm just uh, I'm out here. I'm trying to put on I'm trying to put on some rodeos. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, wh where at, Craig? The first one The first one's gonna be at, at Lubbock, Texas. Okay. It's gonna be a series, and uh, we're gonna start in the summer. Um, we did like some, we did like some mock events where it's like, uh -huh. we did a couple and we had some buck outs and some people showed up, but we want to blow it up. And, uh, we just, we feel like your, your social media might be able to help us. But anyway, we're going to kick it off. I think in June, you got uh -huh. any, you got any, we're, we're, we haven't set c official dates. So we're, we're, we're kind of flexible okay. um, cause we got all our own stock. What, what's your June look like? My June is um, right now. Uh, I don't really have my book with me, Craig. Um, Randy gave you my number. Is that right, Craig? No, That's I got. Crazy. I got it from. I got it from one of the interns. Oh, okay. Randy, I've been messaging Randy. Okay. Okay, Katiri. Yeah. Okay, and you you were out in New Mexico, correct? Yes, yeah, sir. I'm from okay. there. Right. Yeah, no, I'm from I'm from New Mexico, but um, yeah, he told me yeah he told me you would, you were gonna call. That's what I was trying to make sure. Um, um yeah, right now um, I'm looking at May. I got one rodeo in May. Okay, so my June. so what if we kick off that first event? It'll be it'll be first weekend of June. Um, what you what kind of what kind of deal you can you make us? What kind of deal can you make us on social media? So I'll just throw it all together. What are you What are you kind of looking for, Craig? Um, I mean, I'm gonna kind of. I mean, I'm just. I'm looking for butts in the seat. You know what I mean? Like that's yes, my sir. that's my end goal. I don't really know the best way to get them there. I just, you know, I got a few bulls that can buck, and I just want to put on rodeo. I just love rodeo. You're wanting some videos, and you're wanting to do. You want me to post them on my stuff, and and then on y'all's page too. 
Yeah, I thought maybe you could do something funny with Dale or something. Okay. Um, yeah, we just have to. We just have to probably ask Dale. So what? What kind of? What you thinking for like a one night deal? Um, like just one night stand with Craig out here. One night stand with Craig uh, at Lubbock. H- how many? Ro- Let me ask you this, Craig. So, how, how many rodeos are you wanting to put on? So, I'm thinking, well, we're thinking this could be the start of an association, really, to be honest. And, I mean, we're okay. going to start small. Like, it'll be, like, technically it'll be an amateur type deal. Um, the Cowboys Rodeo Association. And, um, anyways, like, of the panhandle. But, anyways, like, we'll, we'll start, and it'll be, uh, I, I want to do eight. I don't know. I want to blow it up, and and maybe we merge with the PRCA. Maybe we don't. Maybe we do our own thing. Maybe yeah. it's maybe it turns into. But then you're just the face of this association, yes, and that's a, like we just lay it on the back of Cheech. I don't know how much you can squat, but man, this thing could get heavy, and we want you to carry it. Yes, sir. Um, so why don't we do this? For and I want to do all eight of those rodeos. Okay. I want, I want to do eight of them. Um, and I just do you do your perf, whichever ones we can do, whichever you can, whatever you can do in your budget, and 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 just work with you. I'm man, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's just gonna be too much money, man. We're just starting off, and like I don't know, I mean I don't I don't make that out here. Okay. I mean like I just. What, yeah. What 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 will fit in your budget? I'm thinking more like two fifty, Cheech, like just two hundred fifty dollars, like. I mean. I'm just I'm out here trying to improve the sport of rodeo and yeah I, you know what I mean like I can give it you cost me two fifty to drive over there from dude, where I'm at you hadn't heard the rest of it I'm I'm still going so yeah what I'm gonna do is I I got two fifty I got I can get you I can get you free beer for the night I can get you a plate of nachos I don't know like I'll cover your dinner. No, I understand. I, I don't drink, Craig. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> uh, I apologize, brother. I'm just, um, I mean, like, yeah. that's just a lot of money, you know what I mean? Like. Yes, sir. And yeah. I don't know. I had, I had talked to Randy, and I asked him, and, and uh, um, but, but are you wanting to go into New Mexico with any of these? Yeah. Yeah. Eventually. Um, yes, sir. Um, I, I, can't, I can't, Craig, I can't honestly. Dude, I can't go out there for 250 We're going to do the finals in Gallup. Okay. So the finals, I could maybe do, give you an extra 1000 because it's going to be the finals, and by then it's number eight, you know. Yes, sir. But, I mean, it's going to be in Gallup. So, I mean, you'd have to get get your butt out there. Oh, yeah, no, I can get out. That's not a problem. When, when are you going to do your finals? Well, I think if we do eight of them, like, it'd be like, it's, you know, September out there would be nice, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Because yeah. the, fair, the fair at Window Rock is going on in September. Are you trying to say you can't make it already? You don't even know the dates? No. No, I'm saying that's good. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, I I'm, I'm, no, I'm not saying that. I, I know, know it's good. I know it's good. I know Window Rock's going on. I know those guys over there. Yeah. Um, what no, if, okay, I'm, okay. I'm not trying to shoot you Look, down, so. I know. Okay. Okay, so I understand. Like, I'm willing to work with you, man. I'm trying to work with you. So, like, what yes, if, sir. like, what if we made you, what if we made you a shareholder in the CRA? Of the panhandle, like, you know, and then like we really work together. Like you get some sweat equity in this, you know. You're a big old boy. You like to sweat. I'm just saying, like, yeah, we get you on eight of these, and that be kind of like your down payment to get in on the ground floor or something that's gonna take off. Man, I'd love to tell you yes, and and I I just can't do that right now where I'm at in my position, Craig. I can't. Well, what what's your position? That, that pay me. Uh, getting, I have to get paid to go announce these rodeos, man. I've got, I like, I gotta either, I gotta either buy a house, make a rent payment. I gotta, you know what I mean? I gotta, I gotta pay bills. Well, and you're not gonna be able to, what? You, I mean, cheap. I don't know what rodeos you're going to, but what rodeo are you gonna be able to go to that you can put a down payment on the house? 
it's not one rodeo, Craig. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that I can't go for cheap like these other guys are going because that's why those guys have a job. Yeah, and but the reason is, well, no, no, no. Hold on, let me. I'll let you talk. So hold on a second. I'm not trying to get sideways, but I'm telling you, those guys are working for cheap, and they're cutting people like me, my throat. Like when I went, like when I'm getting a hundred dollars more, for, and then they're turning around and trying to get some perf to go back and do their deal. I'm like, guys. You, you you can't even afford – if you're trying to tell me that that's what I told them the other day last week and they pissed me off because everybody wants somebody to go to work for cheap and they want something and they want somebody to go put something in when I've got five or six other irons in the fire, but they don't understand that I have to make money to do this for a living. I don't have another job. This is my living is I'm, announcing rodeo. I'm and just, those guys that are going for cheap, good. They won't be here for another two or three years. And guess what? I will be. Because I've been doing this for 10 years, and I've earned, I put in my days of sweat. Look, so, I'm trying to tell you, I want to give you part of this. Like, I need, I, don't, I, I can't, I, I can't, can't anymore I can't do this on my own. I'm saying, we work our butts off for two, three years, we bottle this thing up, and we sell it for millions. We get us a cool logo, you do the social media and the announcing, I'll bring the stock. We get Dale Brisby in here do a few videos with you. If you get Dale on board, I, I'll tell you what. If you get Dale on board, I, I'll, I'll, I will, I will come and ask you for what you want me to come work for you. Okay. But well, I cannot. I can't. I can't work for cheap. I can't work for two hundred fifty dollars, Craig. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be ugly. I have to pay bills. I, I don't have another job. I don't go to work as a welder. I don't. I don't do anything else besides. Announce rodeo. That's what well, I, I mean, what are you doing right now? Why don't Why don't you get a job? Because I because I announce rodeo. Okay. Well, because let's talk to, to Dale. Let's talk to Dale and see what and see how, what he's thinking. And I mean, I, I don't I don't know what you're trying to say. Like, why don't I get a job? Because everybody else is working for cheap. Yeah. And those guys that are paying them to go for cheap. And they won't be around for a long time. So they're not, yeah, they're not charging out the rear end and they're having to get another I'm job. I get it. I'm, I get it. I'm not charging. I'm, I'm charging a fair price because you know what I normally charge? No way it's more than that. You normally charge more than that? You guys, let me tell you something. You and Randy, right now, somebody are jacking with me, and I'm not gonna let it happen. So, Look, call if, me back. If you don't want to, you're serious. If you don't want, whenever you're serious. If you don't want to announce my rodeos, you ain't got to. I'm gonna have no, Randy. I'm gonna have Randy out here. He's too expensive too. Yeah, but he gets paid though. And the other thing is. You to y'all are y'all y'all aren't gonna get me worked up. So call me when y'all are more serious hey. about doing it. I gotta go rope. Hey, I think I think we already did get you worked up. Just a t just just a tip got me started, but I haven't finished. Well, you so, call down. Get you guys are, I'm cool. You guys get serious. Y'all just holler back at you me. Get Dale, like, oh, you get Dale. You get Dale on board, and then let's do this no, deal. You get Dale on board, and then we'll do it. You get Dale on board, and I'm gonna give you part of the CRAP. The what? The CRA. No. P. I'm good, man. CRA. P. Should make a gang sign out of that. That's what it sounds like. Son, don't, don't, don't make fun of me. I ain't making fun of you. You want to charge me? Charge me out the butt. Then make fun of me. You, you don't even know what I normally go for. I hope it ain't more than that. Whoever, whoever's laughing back there, give is giving you away. I hope it ain't more than that. It's a bit more. My old lady's watching TV, eating nachos. Uh, make her something. Well, it's Sunday. I guess I'm going to. I ain't going to hire your expensive ass, too. That's all right. That's okay. How much you think, George? He'd probably go for, he'd probably, he'll probably go for cheap. He'd be the one. He knows that, and he'll even throw in some social media. Yeah, he can climb up yeah. on a horse, too. Yeah. Anyway, when you guys are serious, holler back at me. I really got to go run a steer. Okay, well, uh, when you got a serious price, call me back.
got it. That's a pretty serious price. You come back with a serious price, two fifty. Yep. When you when you're ready to make a million, call me. I gotta go. I'm gonna call a real announcer. All right, cool. <laughs> Damn. All right. So this is crazy. <laughs> Last week, uh, Craig Chavez called me from New Mexico, and he's putting on a bunch of rodeos. And he said, "Hey, I want Cheech to come announce these rodeos." I was like, "Okay, I'll tell Cheech." So when Cheech came out the other day, I said, "Yeah, what's your price?" And he says, "Whatever." Yeah. And so I was like, "Yo, well, I'm gonna have Craig call you." <laughs> I gave Craig your number, but Craig hadn't called him yet. Well, this Craig called him. <laughs> just so happened to get the right. The I had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah. Oh, my God. So now he's going to be mad at me. <laughs> like, oh, that was, too he's gonna call, that was too perfect. He's probably going to call me or text me. Uh, I think he was actually about to rope something. I bet I bet Kelsey walked up. It says that same number called me. Yeah. Oh, it called you? No, you called her, didn't you? Yeah, off of that phone. Yeah. Yeah. No, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I was, thought he knew it was you for a second because he's like you and Randy. And yeah. I was, I was like, like, oh. Was like, no, like <laughs> I told him about Craig. To that the so, other Craig. Yeah. Craig Chavez was gonna call him about some rodeo. It's funny. He talked me into being that Craig. Like he was you, like, I was like, no, the interns. He's like, yeah, but you know, Randy. I was like, as yeah. As he did, like, do you think you could call him right now and and be like, hey, does this does this Craig guy call you? And he let him vent and be like, man, he seems kind of odd, but he's throwing some numbers at me on what he's going to pay me, and I, I'm in. I'm going. I, I think he's on to us now. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'd get it. I shouldn't have called Kelsey. I bet Kelsey walked up and tipped him off. Yeah. Or he just realized, I don't know. Well, he heard us laughing. Yeah, I must have heard y'all laughing. Oh, golly. That's crazy how that worked out, though. I... <sighs> any, any closing thoughts? Yes. Okay, this isn't, this is, I seen someone tweet this the other day. They said it's, they were like, it's so sad when you're passionate about something and you're telling someone about it and they don't care. I don't, like, yeah. And I was like, man, that don't make no sense because if you're really, really passionate about something, you, you don't, you know, you don't care, care if you they don't care. Yeah. Care. So go be passionate, be passionate about being passionate. Even if other people don't care. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's that's been on my mind lately. That's good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Have you been telling somebody about your bronc riding and they don't care? No, absolutely not. You sure? I don't give a shit. Word. Word. What closing remarks do you have? Nobody owes you anything. And this is good because uh, the interns, you know, like we're looking for new interns, but even if you're at a place or at a spot where you think somebody owes you something, nobody owes you anything. You got to go out work, out hustle, and just... Uh, be uh, change your perspective and be positive and be optimistic and keep moving forward. But just remember, at the end of that, nobody owes you anything. Yeah, Gary V says the fifty one forty nine. Try to make sure you give more than what you're asking for, right? Like he wants to make sure in everything, give you give the other person more value than they bring you. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's at least fifty one. I'm bringing them fifty one percent value. They're bringing me forty nine. Mm. Like make sure it's everybody always tries to make sure it's the other way. They want to make sure that they're getting brought more value. But if you're both trying to strive for the opposite of that, you know, then it's a healthy competition where that relationship can can thrive. Because in any partnership or relationship, it starts to crumble when one person feels like they're being taken advantage of. Yeah. And I think the key to making sure that doesn't happen is communication. <clears throat> If you communicate with that other person and you both know, because anyway, that's that's the key. When and and when you go too long without that communication, then all of a sudden, Continual that's when communication. That's when yeah. an explosion happens, and some you find out that one person feels like they're they're receiving more like thirty, yeah, and they're giving you seventy. So, anyways, in any relationship, whether you want to work for Dale Brisby, you strive to bring me fifty one, and I'm gonna make sure that you you don't just beat me really really quick though you know when i first came to work for you like when we first started making videos um you you actually taught me something that i didn't really uh, understand and this goes also for how to read no or I in addition to, to that all right i can i mean i could spell anybody. in addition to how to read in addition on how to read though for the you younger guys um wanting to come here or whatever it is you're doing uh 
don't be scared of the non-transactional uh, relationships. Like if you got to take some of them and you got to do a few of them, non-transactional means just like the schooling deal. If you're going to get advice from some of the best in the world, but they want you to do something for them, you better. Yeah. You better. Like how valuable is that? <laughs> like you want to be a bull rider and Dang you get not. four sessions with JB Mooney. You know, like that's right. If he sends you to the store to go get cigarettes, you better get in your truck yeah. and go get him like a carton of yeah, cigarettes. Like how bad do you want to be one? Yeah. How bad do you want to be a bull rider? Yeah. You know, because he's the second greatest of all time. He'll make you figure out if you want to be a bull rider. He dang sure will. Yeah, he's not a sissy. No and he ain't going to lose sleep if no. you decide you don't want yes. to based on him putting you on a rank ass bull. Right. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for enjoying. We're on to the next one. This is Dale Brisby, Josiah Chicho Nation, Zapata. And Donnie Daytona, don't forget to text me, 940-353-0890. Pow, pow.